again. This is Stephen Wells, president of the International Chiropractors Association with your weekly update for Monday, August 10th. Well, I hope you're beginning to get the picture. Last week, I introduced you to very, a very well-known and respected researcher in chiropractic profession. He's from Canada, right? And his name is Dr. Greg Kotchuk, right? And, and I wanted you to hear from his own words what his vision is for the future of chiropractic, right? Well, what's happening now, Artie, is that the group of intellectual elites have decided we don't want to put up with them anymore, right? They call us the crazies. They want to divorce their evidence-based viewpoint from the vitalistic subluxation-based chiropractors, which actually comprises uh, probably over 70% of the practicing chiropractors on the planet. And so we're drawing a line in the sand and we need all chiropractors in the United States to recognize that the future of our profession is at stake. And the ICA is the only, the only national, international organization that's willing to step up, throw down the BS flag, and say that's not where we want to go. Okay, so the bottom line right, is if you want the ICA to step up to the plate, to continue to be the voice of subluxation-based vitalistic chiropractic, if you want the ICA to do its job, well, then you're going to vote yes. Okay, we do need okay, to rethink what talent, what expertise, we do need to diversify our board in multiple ways, not only on geography, but in talent and in skill sets. And there's a lot of chiropractors out there that are not members of the ICA that hold to those beliefs. They hold to the tradition. They understand through their own clinical experience. They know what chiropractic really is. They know what chiropractic has potential to deliver and remove the suffering from patients around the world. They know it. And so my question to you is, are you gonna listen to all the noise? Are you gonna listen to all of the, all of the misinformation, all of the accusation that the ICA is, uh, is in a panic, already that the board doesn't know what they're doing, the board's trying to take over uh, and uh, take over the uh, and remove the rights and responsibilities of the membership, couldn't be further from the truth. You see, because the truth is, we do need to reorganize, all right? We do, do need to strategize. We do need to stand up and say, we ain't taking it no more. We ain't taking it no more. We're, we're no longer going to assume to let the intellectually elites in this profession tell us, the ICA doctors, all of the doctors in the United States, that you're not allowed to see an asymptomatic patient, or that you're not allowed to take an x-ray, or that you're not allowed to see a child under 12 because anyone under 12 is too young to feel pain. And if you don't have pain, well, then there's no evidence to support the even need to see a patient. Okay. That's what our profession is going to look like in 20 or 25 years if the ICA does not take a stand. So it's not about merger, okay? It's not about taking control and, and taking the rights away from its members. It's not about taking the rights away from the RAs, okay? The representative assembly is an integral part of this organization. Already, and, and, and the board has worked diligently to, in order to preserve the best aspects of the Constitution and the best aspects of the uh, bylaws, combine them into one operating document already in an effort to mobilize and organize to fight a fight that we can't risk, risk losing. You see, the future of our profession depends on your vote. Right? And if you want to continue business as usual, if you want to continue the, 
uh, every couple of years having these uh, personality contests over uh, playing, uh, playing, uh, uh, what's the name of that TV show that was on a couple of years ago? Oh yeah. Let's, let's continue to play game of Thrones. All right. Let's continue to have the various tribes and the various subgroups that find a home in the ICA. Let's continue to let those tribes fight it out with the popularity ballots in order to see who's going to take control of the organization in order to spend a couple of years trying to do it their way and lose the continuity and lose sight of the real white walkers. The real problem that we're faced with from outside the United States or that while we're fighting amongst ourselves, as, as they say, and I, I don't mean in the IC, I mean in the whole profession in the United States. Well, we circle the wagons and shoot in, okay, the White Walkers are going to wipe us all out before we even realize what happened. All right, so it's time to wake up. It's time to recognize that the board of directors of the ICA is working in the best interests, not only of the association, it's fulfilling its duties and its responsibilities, but it's working on the best interest of not only the RAs, in the best interest of its members, and in the long run, in the best interest of the entire profession. All right? So that's what's at stake. Now, the ballots went out today, and you'll be receiving them in a few days. All right? And I want to invite every single one of you that has a question okay, that is watching and listening to all of the noise and all of the misinformation and all of the scare and all of the fear about what's going to happen if this change occurs. Watch the presentation. Watch the recording of the meeting. And then and after you watch that, if you still have questions, then send me an email. Okay, don't send me an email demanding that we repeal them. Don't send me an email telling me that I'm a tyrant and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to take over the ICA. You see, I don't have an agenda. I don't have a tribe other than the ICA. Okay, I'm committed to do what's right. I'm committed with my board, with my board. And it's not just me, it's my board. It's your board. It's the ICA board is committed to a future, a future that fulfills the vision of B.J. Palmer, our founder, 94 years ago. And the ICA board is moving, okay, to reestablish the ICA as the premier international association. Already, and we're not going to allow a few on the research council to use their position in order to, instead of seeking the truth, in order to advance their political agenda. And I thank you in advance for your confidence in your board of directors already and the direction that we're setting. And so let me, let me close by reading an open letter to the new ICA Governance Committee by a former chair of the Representative Assembly, who served for years in that position and on the board of the ICA. And this is what he said following our meeting on Thursday. He said, thank you very much for the members online meeting last night. The entire committee did a good job informing us of the values and reasons for proposing a new constitutional amendment. As I see it, the most important and essential reason for making these changes is to move away from a personality-driven organization to a mission-driven organization. All of the ICA past presidents have had enormous passion and love for chiropractic and have all brought to the ICA their own unique and vital purpose. And in every new president, we would go through a new orientation of what we were to focus on during that term of office and would shift gears and revved up with new committees and new objectives and sometimes new directions and strategies on where and how to sail the ICA ship. Term after term of great presidents, but still slow progress towards our goal. This is the ICA's greatest weakness. And so I am voting yes for a new mission-driven ICA and a governance structure that will drive the ICA ship to greater and greater service for the people. Thank you, Gene Kretzinger. I couldn't have said it better myself. 
And so that's it. That's it for my message today. And I want everybody out there. I want the members and I want the non-members. Okay, I want everybody in the profession to understand that the ICA is not in chaos. Okay, we are getting our stuff together, so to speak. Okay, we are reorganizing already. We are, we are, we are getting energized. Okay, because we're not going to let our profession get changed into neck pain and back pain only. We are going to defend the rights of you to take x-rays. We're going to defend the rights of you to see children. We're going to defend the rights of you to have a doctor-patient relationship that is not dictated by a random control trial study. You see, as a, as a practicing doctor of chiropractic, with the experience of seeing patients on a day-to-day -day basis, and seeing the miracles and seeing the changes in their lives brought about by the power of a properly delivered chiropractic adjustment, we're going to defend your right to do that, not only in the United States, but around the world. Okay, so until next week, Artie, I thank you for your time and attention. And just, just know, okay. When you get your ballot, don't leave it sitting on, on the desk. Okay, don't sit there and ignore it. Open it. Vote yes. We need a new, we need a new direction. We need to grow internationally. We need to adapt to the changing political environment, not only for the survival of the ICA, but for the survival of the profession, okay? And it's not about me, and it's not about the current board of directors. Okay, it's about the profession. And we need now, more than ever, your support, your commitment to prepare and to help unify all chiropractors who don't want to see our profession lost. The allopathic approach of limiting ourselves to neck pain and back pain. Well, that's my update for today. If you missed the ICA members meeting last Thursday, it's now posted on the ICA website. If you missed last week's message, please do so, Be, please look at it now. For once you get the big picture, once you learn what is at stake, I am confident that you will vote yes and support the unanimous recommendation of the board of directors of your ICA. Now next week, we will return and review a couple of those research papers co-authored by Dr. Kotchuk as I had promised last week, and we will discuss what they claim, what they mean, and why I consider them fake research. And, and that fake research is being indexed in PubMed. So meanwhile, please check out the ICA COVID resource page where you can read the entire complaint that there has been filed against the ICA. And doctors, please share these messages with friends and colleagues, and meanwhile, Please reach out and connect with the ICA. If you're not an ICA member, thank you for your support. And if not now, is the time to join us as we protect and promote vitalistic subluxation-based chiropractic around the world. We are here for you to help you help your patients because they still need that reassurance that there is no need for mass panic. And don't forget, you are truly their beacon of hope. And we will get through these challenging times and we will do it by working together. Thank you.